Heavenly Father and our God. Lord, we come to you believing you today, God. The Lord God, you are the life giver. Lord, you are the healer this morning. Lord God, whatsoever we ask, believing. Lord God, you promise that you'll give it to us, O oh God. And therefore, Lord God, we come crying not in vain and asking in vain, but Lord God, we come believing. And having faith in God this morning, that Lord, whatsoever thing we desire, Lord, when we ask of it, O oh God, you will grant it to us, God. Heavenly Father, this baby here, Lord God, our sister, with a condition in her hand, her feet. Lord God, the sister that will do the operation this week, oh God. Lord Jesus, you know all of our needs this morning. Heavenly Father, we pray that you come on the scene, oh God. And Lord God, you do like you've done in the years gone by, oh God. The Lord God, when the prophet had prophesied that, and before the knife touched her, God, everything was all right. Lord Jesus, just have your way, O oh God. Lord, as we put a word before you this morning. Lord God, we pray that you touch the lips that speak. And Lord God, the ears that would hear it this morning. Lord God, you know those that are between two opinions this morning. We pray, O oh God, that the word might take full effect in the heart of your children. Lord God, we come, Lord, not to present ourselves, but Lord God, to present you and you crucified, oh God. But Lord God, you're no longer hanging on that cross. You're no longer in that manger. But Lord God, you're living in the lives of your children. The Lord Jesus, uh, your word has become flesh to us today, oh God. And Lord God, that's why we speak and have our being. And Lord God, we pray that you'd come on the scene this morning in the power of and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And Lord God, may the word become alive this morning in the hearts of your children. Bless us now, God, as we look to you. We thank you for all things. And we praise you, O God, for that which you have already done. Just have your way now as we look to you and believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. I'm really glad to be in the house of the Lord. Shake somebody and say, God bless you. Just glad to be in God's house this morning. I know many under expectation for God to move this morning. Amen. You see, whatever we stand in need of this morning, God will grant it. Amen. We're not here for a show. No, sir. We're here for the living God that we made manifest in our midst this morning. I'd like you to turn your Bibles to the book of uh, Revelation chapter 6. I'd like to read verse uh, 5 and verse 6. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third bee say, come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balance in his hand. And I heard the voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. But see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Then over in the book of Colossians uh, chapter 1 and verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. May the Lord add his blessing to the word. You may be seated. You know, it's so very important to understand the one that's in our midst this morning. I'd like to read a quote as I go forward this morning. I'd like to speak on waiting on the promise. And for a subject this morning, 
being that I take the background of the third seal, the stimulation of revelation. In the message Bert Payne, page 35, he was that rock that was in the wilderness. He was the pillar of fire. I am that I am. Who was I am? The pillar of fire. The, that burning bush. Is it right? And he was made flesh and dwell among us. Said I come from God and return to God. In order to return in the form of the Holy Ghost. And here he is with us today. Scientific picture taken of it. Here he is. To prove more than any scientific picture, anything is here to prove it. For it's him. I, the Son of Man, will be revealed in this day. Now, here he is. So he paused now and said, now, here he is. I am looking right at it. You say, do you see it? John saw it too. But the rest of them didn't. He said, now look, to prove it now. So he's saying that he's here. The same one that was in the burning bush is here. And then he said, look, to prove it now, that woman is a stranger to me. I've never seen her. In my life. But she's got something wrong. With one of her limbs. That she's praying about. That's right lady. You had an operation on it. It's your husband sitting next to you. You're not from here. You're from California. Your name is Roland. Your stomach trouble is ended too sir. So he's now talking to her husband. You had stomach trouble, didn't you? Well, it's all gone. Your leg is healed. In that day, the Son of Man, he says, he said, here, sitting right back through here, there's a man. He's a colored man. Something wrong with his eyes. He, yes, he work or do or his work he does, he does something about a car, polished cars. Car walks out, right? Your eyes are going bad. You have just believed, haven't you? Some real strange thing happened to you. Your first name is Fred. That's right. Your last name is Con. That's right. You believe now? Your eyes ain't going bad, going to bother you anymore then. I never seen the man in my life. He said, the man right back behind there is not from here either, from California. Got a bad back. Mr. Owens, that's you. The Lord Jesus made you well. I never seen the man in my life. Know nothing about him. I just followed the light as it goes. Oh, could you disbelieve when we have the mighty God unveil before us? Amen. And do you believe that same God is here today? Amen. He's not only the God of yesterday, he's a God of today. Amen. And I tell you, some would say that it was so real yesterday. I tell you, he's more real today if you will tap into his word. Amen. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a mighty God and he's made manifest among us. We want to make him unfold today by his word. I mean, last week we, we looked at the incarnated Christ. I, incarnated is bringing something back that seems like it was in the past. But it's no longer in the past because it is ever present. And the word of God, you know, is ever present. The, the, the word of God is never past tense. It's the same yesterday, today, and is forever. Is that right? Hallelujah. Amen. We, we, we know, as we, we said last week, we, we, we saw Daniel in the book of Daniel. When Daniel saw the revelation of the word coming forth 
it was said to Daniel, Daniel, seal up those things. To John, it was said, seal these things uh, unto the time uh, of the end. But where are we today? We're at the end time. Is that right? Amen. We've seen mass persecution of the believers. Amen. I, I was looking this week in India. You know, they were showing that, amen, I'm sorry, in the Philippines, uh, that they, they, they've burnt down churches and homes of believers, our believers, mass persecution. But you know what? They said they have lost their homes, they've lost their place of worship, but they can't take God out of their heart. Amen? The word have I hid in my heart, hallelujah, that I might not sin against thee. Amen? Now we find that these things are not new. They were prophecy. Now the prophecy is coming forth. That's why we've got to, in our time, we've got to wait on the move of God. We've got to wait on what God is doing in our time. So we are waiting on the promise. Now, brethren, there's going to be many distractions that is going to take you from the promise. Is that right? Amen. Things that let you get earthbound. Amen. Things that take you off the track to tell you, look at yourself. Look at these things. But the word of God can never fail. If God say it, hallelujah, the Bible said it cannot return to him void. Hallelujah. So if God said, I send my word to heal you, if you're going to believe that word, the word's going to heal you. Is that right? Because it cannot fail because the word is God. Whatever God said, all you've got to do is take God at his word. Amen. I, I was just, uh, amen, see my brother sent me something in South Africa. Amen, there's a woman this morning, their, their service already ended. She's giving testimony because God heal her, amen, of sugar diabetes. Uh, God heal her blood pressure. God heal her gaita. And all of that is gone. So she's standing uh, before the church uh, and she's testifying uh, that God is still alive. Uh, God do what God says is going to do. You said, and what about me? What about your faith in God's word? Hallelujah. God has not failed you, but you failed to stand on what God said. Is that right? Hallelujah. Amen. In Revelation chapter 6, amen, we see now, hallelujah, amen, here we're looking at the ride of the Antichrist because we realize uh, that this rider is not God. Amen? We, we find, uh, hallelujah, that the, the lamb speak, the Bible said, uh, and when the lamb uh, opened the seal, so the lamb was the one uh, opening the seal, uh, and a rider goes forth. Uh, amen? The first time we saw him, uh, he was on a white horse. Uh, amen? Why was it, why was it, hallelujah, white? Uh, because the Bible said in St. Matthew 24, let no man deceive you. It was a deceiving spirit. Amen. White. It looks like. Amen. But the Bible said it will deceive the very elect if it was possible. Is that right? He had a bow. He had no horror. And the Bible said he went for conquering and to conquer. Amen. The next. Hallelujah. Amen. He changes horse. Amen. From a white to a red. The bloody red. Amen. It was red by the blood of the martyr. Hallelujah. Amen. Of the Christians. Amen. I want to show you this now. You know, when we talk about the Antichrist, we're not talking about, amen, a devil with a sword. The Bible said the two will be so close together. No wonder the Bible tell you, Mystery Babylon the great, the mother of all us, is a rat. And the mother church is really the church of Rome. Is it right? It, it, it's not in the, the gambling house somewhere. No, it, it's not out, uh, hallelujah, in, in Skid Row somewhere. No, it's right there looking like the word of God. We realize that Cain was just, uh, hallelujah, as righteous as Abel was. Right. Is that right? Yeah. Amen. But hallelujah, the Bible said that Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice uh, than that of Cain. Amen. Why? 
It came by revelation. Is that right? Hallelujah. You can't worship God by knowledge. Amen. That's why somebody said, you know, hallelujah. Amen. I want to know the word of God. I want to go to Bible school. That's going to teach you theology. But God's not known by theology. Hallelujah. God's known by revelation. That's why when he asked them, who do men say that I the son of man am? Hallelujah. And some say you're Jeremiah. Some say, uh, but he said, who do you say? He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood has not revealed it, but my father in heaven. And upon this rock, what rock? The revelation of who Jesus is. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. If you've got a revelation of him, you've got to be able to identify Christ in all ages. Is that right? Hallelujah. Amen. And we find now there in the third seal. Hallelujah. Amen. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Now notice the beasts are the living creatures. Amen. And we find them, uh, amen, there in Ezekiel. We find them uh, in the book of Revelation. One like a lion, one like an oxen, one like a man. And the fort was like a flying eagle. All symbolizes uh, the power of Christ. Hallelujah. In that time. Amen. Hallelujah. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he had, what did he add now? Remember in the second ride, he had a sword, amen, to take peace from the earth. But now he had a pair of balance in his hand. What is that balance? It's a scale. He's going to wear something. It's for commerce. It's a ride. You know, the Bible tells you there's going to be a time where you can neither buy or sell unless you have the mark. But, but watch this one now. Hallelujah. Amen. And I heard a voice in the midst of the beast say, Hallelujah, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measure of barley for a penny. Hallelujah. What, what, what is wheat and barley? Amen. It's to make bread. He's a right. Hallelujah. They were, they, were, they were weighing out and selling out the bread. Hallelujah. But this time uh, he was talking about uh, not the natural bread, uh, but the bread of life. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, do you remember the, the church? Uh, hallelujah. They were paying for prayer. Hallelujah. You could pay your way. Uh, amen. Out of purgatory. Hallelujah. Amen. The church. Uh, amen. We're grabbing uh, from the people for the riches uh, of the church. Uh, oh, yeah. But that's not God. Is that right? No one, all oh, glory. They try to make themselves rich with this early goods while the people go poor. Is that right? Amen. But, brethren, that's not the, the duty of the church. The duty of the church is for eternal life. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. But he said that a voice speak. Hallelujah. As they were weighing it out. Glory. Hallelujah. See thou heard not the oil and the wine. Oh, Jesus. My Lord. Amen. Now let me take this now. He said this rider is the same one, but another stage of his ministry. The first stage, a white horse. He was just a teacher, just an antichrist teacher. Hallelujah. He was against the word of God. And now, how can you be, a, be an antichrist? Anybody that deny what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Anyone that deny that the word of God is truth. Is antichrist. Is that right? Now a lot of people can take a, a portion of the word of God. Did not the word of God say so? Oh yes, sir. We believe it. It's the word of God. But brethren, we're not called to believe part of the word. All of the 
word. Can a church stand up today on the doctrine of the New Testament? Hallelujah. When we're not parting the word to match our organization, what should we do? We should bring in the organization to match the word of God. For the word of God is already settled. Hallelujah. Oh, I believe this is the truth. But what do you say about baptism? Oh, I will go with what Jesus said. But you missed the revelation. Hallelujah. What, what about what Paul said? Oh, hallelujah. That was Paul speaking. No, Paul speak the word of God. He's a right. Hallelujah. How did God speak to you? It was holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And if they were moved by the Holy Ghost, it's no longer man. It's God. Hallelujah. Oh, so when the Bible declare, oh, they said, what about the Sabbath? Let no man fool you in meat or drink. Respect of a holy day or the Sabbath day. That's a shadow of good things to come. The law, hallelujah, was your schoolmaster. For what purpose? To bring it to Christ. Hallelujah. But in Christ, the word come. Are you still in school? Hallelujah. You've got to move on. Hallelujah. The law was good. The law was perfect. But the law could not save you and I. For there was sin in us. Hallelujah. But Christ came. Hallelujah. Grace. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And by grace are you saved. Through faith. It is a gift of God. It's not by your works. Hallelujah. It is a gift of God. Amen. We find under the second seal. Amen. The red horse. Amen. And now, hallelujah, the martyrs of the Roman Catholic Church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's recorded. Fox's Book of Martyr. Amen. 68 million people were killed by the church. What was the church doing? Trying to reform. Is that right? Hallelujah. And watch the way they do it. Watch this now. They take the Bible away from the people. And they say, you have no knowledge. You can't interpret the word of God for yourself. So you've got to listen to the priest. No, the priest was no longer coming from the Holy Scripture. They had the Bible. He was sitting there, but they weren't permitted to read it. Why? Because if they read it, they would have known the truth. But when they hide the truth from the people, they take from them the word of God. Hallelujah. And give them no creeds and dogmas. Hallelujah. It's no longer what the word says. It's what the church says. Is that right? And the church was no speaking for God. Hallelujah. Amen. And under that disguise. Amen. They begin to kill. Amen. Bring down an iron fist upon the people. Amen. Why? Hallelujah. Because. Amen. They want to scare them away from the word of God. Oh, but brethren, do you realize there's a time when all the truth of God's word has got to be restored? That's why we got to watch that spirit that try to organize a church under the headship of man. Is that right? Paul said, after my departing, grievous wolves will come in, not sparing the flock. Is that right? But you've got the word. Is that right? And Paul said, and though there be an angel from heaven that preach any other thing than that which we have preached, let him be a curse. Oh, hallelujah. They're trying to tell you the word of God is not inspired. Oh, glory. But I tell you what, to an unbeliever, the word is never inspired. But let a true believer take the word of God. Hallelujah. An unbeliever can read St. Mark 11 and it does nothing. It's dead on paper. 
But let a true believer take God's word and read God's word and that word come alive and bring forth the substance. Why God says so. Is that right? Hallelujah. But in the hands of an unskilled, an unbeliever, the word has no power because they bound God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and also, we, we, we watch not uh, the gifts, but we look at the giver. Amen. Amen. People today now try to impersonate the gift of God. Amen. But I tell you what, it's got to be perfect. Amen. Somebody trying to say, oh, you've got five children. No, you've you got three. Stop there. You're guessing. Because if that's a word of wisdom, God can't lie. God can't miss. Is that right? Somebody telling somebody, oh, you, 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 your neighbor, they're against you. They, 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 they're jealous about your success. Hallelujah. That's a lie. Is that right? You're trying to turn one person against the other. But you know what? That's what the unbeliever wants. They don't want God's word. They, they, they want a man with a lying lip. Let me to tell them somebody's business. They don't want God's word. Is that right? For Paul said, if any man being crass is a new creature. Because everybody will feel, you know, the, the reason why I'm not better than I am today is because somebody holding me down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some, somebody blocking your progress. Nobody's blocking your progress. Hallelujah. You need to tap into the promise of God. Is that right? Hallelujah. Amen. Is that right? Amen. The promise is yours. Hallelujah. Amen. And what God said, God will back up his word. Is that right? Hallelujah. Amen. Right here today. You know, it's no different. Not only the Catholics, but the Protestants are doing the same thing. I was reading yesterday. You know, somebody put it, a, a retired teacher, a very old woman. And she, she said, you know, she's terminally ill. And she, she thought she was going to die quickly. So she took her car and she loaned it to the pastor. And, you know, she tell him, you know, you can, if, if I die, sell the car. And, you know, take the money and, and bury me. And, you know, so she lived longer than she thought. And she need no money for her sustenance. So she go back to the pastor. And the pastor said, I don't owe you anything. And he said, well, he said, you, you know, it was a gift given to me. And he said, you know, that's normal for the church. He said, people take as much as a prado and give it to a pastor or a preacher. He said, that's normal for the church. And you know, I was thinking a pastor speaking like that. Uh, he should be ashamed of himself. Because people preach the gospel. And what they're looking for is free handout from somebody. Brethren, let me tell you what. Uh, Abraham uh, could have been given riches. But Abraham said, uh, lest they say uh, they make Abraham rich. Is that right? All that I have need of, uh, the hands, Lord, have provided it. Uh, is that right? Amen. Hallelujah. He's telling the woman, I don't owe you anything. You know what? The media is going to take that. Everybody's going to take that. Uh, they're going to be looking at the church. Uh, is that right? But brethren, I'll tell you, the church of God is a family of God. Yes. Hallelujah. I mean, I was looking at something else from South Africa this morning where... Amen. A certain pastor, he, he was attacking the media. And so the media turned back at him. And they said, you're worshiping in a tent. But you've got a million dollar car that you're driving. The best that there is. Is that right? And you're taking the people's money. You know, David, David said, I live in a palace. But the, the hawk of the covenant is in a tent. Lord, I'm going to build you a house. Is that right? God's working 
on your desires. Is that right? The gospel is not to make one rich. No, sir. And so if you have not a heart for it, you've got to leave it alone. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I remember brothers, you know, would have been given things and they worked together in pairs. And if you give this one, it was his. And the other brother is suffering. But he's not looking in that direction because his needs are met. You know, brethren, it should not be like that. Is that right? And you know, to one another, you should not just look, uh, although the church will do it. Uh, but if you know your brother is in need, are you there with me? We are to support one another. We are to strengthen one another. Is that right? And when we know that each other, if Brother Lambert has got a business, uh, amen, we ought to support him uh, because he's one of us. Uh, you got to strengthen your own hands uh, for the battle that you're in. Uh, are you telling me, brothers? Uh, amen. Let us lift up one another. Let us lift up the household of faith. Uh, amen. He that has not, uh, hallelujah, receive from those that have. Uh, hallelujah. Because you've got to realize uh, all that I have uh, is provided by God. Are you telling me? Uh, but there's people, amen, sometimes they feel, uh, amen, I've got nothing to give. You, you know, brethren, there's never a man that has nothing to give. Are you with me? Amen. The little that you have, if you would break it and give it, God will bless you with more. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so many times you find even the church trying to do something. Amen. People shut up their bowels. Amen. You know what I have is mine. Hallelujah. Amen. But tomorrow you look uh, and the church uh, is going to supply your needs. Uh, amen. Listen, when we are Christians, uh, there's something about us. Uh, is that right? Uh, hallelujah. Because the Bible said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. So when the church, when the body comes under pressure, hallelujah. And they begin to hallelujah, weigh out uh, the wheat and the barley. Hallelujah. Remember, it was an antichrist spirit that was riding with the beam balance. Hallelujah. But it was a lamb that speak. He said, see thou hurt not uh, the oil and the wine. I want to settle down there a little bit. Uh, oil symbolizes spirit. And wine symbolizes stimulation of revelation. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. How many believe that? Oil and wine in the Bible is associated always. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When the truth of a promised word of God has been truly revealed to his saints that is filled with the oil. Hallelujah. Amen. They get stimulated. Is that right? And brethren, let me say, let me say this this morning. Amen. You know, different people worship different ways. Hallelujah. You know, some persons, uh, oh, they worship God. They, they don't want no noise. Uh, they, they want everything to be poised uh, and quiet uh, and saintly. That's all right. Amen. But I'll tell you, when I read the scripture, what I find is that when the power of God, amen, was upon somebody, hallelujah, they couldn't keep it quiet. It was Jeremiah that said, when the word of God was in me, I never want to say it, but when it was in me, I feel like fire shut up within my bone. Hallelujah. Amen. When we read the psalm, amen, David was actually making music. He was playing on the harp. Amen, and David sometimes, amen, gets so stimulated. David said, I will run to a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah. He's a strength of my shield. He gave me power with all. Hallelujah. For I am free from condemnation. He's a rock of my salvation. That's the power of God. 
Hallelujah. When David was preparing for the building of the temple, him and God appointed the musicians to go before them. He's a writer. You know, the Bible said that God inhabits the praises of his people. He's a writer. Hallelujah. Amen. And I tell you, the devil don't like uh, when you praise God. I, I wanted to hear me, somebody. He want you to sit down. Uh, amen. With a long face. Uh, amen. As if the world is on top of you. Are you there with me? Uh, but the people of God must have joy. The people of joy of God. Uh, amen. Must have a praise eggs uh, in their mouth. Uh, are you there with me? Uh, when you praise God uh, in the midst of the trial, uh, the devil don't know what to do with you. Hallelujah. Amen. I love Psalm 100. Uh, he said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It didn't talk about the symphony uh, of music. Uh, he said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Holy land. Serve the Lord with what? gladness come before his presence uh, with singing knowing that the Lord he is God it is he that has made us uh, and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pastor that's what my joy is hallelujah Jesus amen when we come to worship uh, it is not something we work up. It is not something you pump up. Hallelujah. Brethren, we don't worship God as if we're doing a favor to somebody. No, sir. When you know the promise of God and you see those promises being fulfilled in your life. Hallelujah. It would be a sin not to tell somebody how about the goodness of God? Oh, hallelujah. The whole time song we used to sing, uh, when I think of uh, the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me, my soul cry out, uh, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. You know, when the world go out, to sport. You, you, you know, and many of you still do. You, you don't sip, keep quiet. When your team is winning the race, hello, somebody. You don't keep quiet. When your team has a upper hand, you're filled with joy. You are stimulated. Is that right? But because we have lost the joy, Hallelujah. David said in Psalm 51, Restore unto me. Hallelujah. You know why he had to say that? He had sin. His countenance had fallen. But David was not looking to God. Amen. For a restoration. And so David said, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Hallelujah. Glory! Tell me about the day uh, when I never had, uh, when I didn't know what to turn, uh, but little by little, uh, God was meeting my needs. Uh, I don't care what you say, uh, I don't care what you do, uh, but I know that God uh, is my provider, God is my keeper, God is my shield. Hallelujah! And that brings about uh, the joy of my salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. But brethren, I'll tell you what. And that is something about the stimulation. The st oh, the oil represent uh, the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Amen. We find there in St. Matthew 25, uh, the foolish virgins... Uh, had no oil. Amen. Hallelujah. Is that right? Amen. Amen. 
the wise virgins had oil yes, in the lamp with their vessel is that right and they could respond to the call of the bridegroom is that right i'll tell you this one thing if you're a child of god god's doing something for you hallelujah hallelujah you, you know there's people who never had a testimony of joy hallelujah amen you, you know they, they take the sayings of the world boy me soft not now go on hello man give me something is that right but but i i, I tell you david it was that said this i once was young no, I'm whole. Never seen the righteous forsaken. Is that right? When you serve God, God open doors. I said, when you praise God, God open doors. I wonder if you hear me, somebody. When you put God in the picture, doors that they say can't open, God opened those doors. Hallelujah. Amen. People think you're not moving from where you are. God moving you up. Is that right? You can look where you are today and look where you used to be. And it's not by your strength, it's by the strength of the Lord. How you think, oh Jesus, my Lord? Hallelujah! Glory! That's why, as people of God, we need to start testifying. Amen of the promise of God. Don't testify defeat. Hallelujah! Don't testify of fear. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shield. Hallelujah. Sickness in your body. Don't give the sickness the power over you. Curse the sickness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What a day we're living in. When the doctor said uh, sugar diabetes uh, cannot be cured. Yes, Hallelujah. But we have testimony right around the world that God heal of sugar diabetes. Yes, what a day we're living in. When they say high blood pressure cannot be cured. But we're hearing all over. Amen. The high blood pressure is being defeated in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So somebody said, what about me? What about your faith? What about your faith in God this morning? Hallelujah. You've got to testify that he's alive. Hallelujah. I tell you the other day about the woman. Amen with the breast cancer. And I'm sorry I couldn't show it. I didn't show it to Brother Simit. I showed it to Francine. The woman had a big hole this big in her breast. Had cancer heated out. And the brother took the picture. And he took the picture when they prayed and that hole was filled up. God is alive. He's alive. He's not dead. He's alive. And his power is still the same. He's alive. Satan want you to believe otherwise. But his power is still the same. Hallelujah. And I tell you this morning. And your life is nothing without him. You are defeated without him. Hallelujah. And young people, your life uh, not going anywhere uh, if you don't know him. To know Christ, uh, his life. Hallelujah. Because whoever you are this morning, uh, the devil set many traps for you. But in the name of Jesus, uh, every trap of the enemy uh, is going to fly uh, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Isaiah the prophet said, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the We live in a world today. 
Nobody wants to wait. We're living in a world where everything must come now. Lord, if you don't do it now. You know, we find young people before they come of age that the young girls looking for a man and they want the man now. And young boys should be going to school and what they want is not education. They, they want a woman. And they want one now. And you know, what, what they're looking for, they're looking for something to fill the eye. A young man want a, a woman and he wants somebody. Lord, give me a pretty woman. And where did he get that beauty from? It's not from the scripture. It comes from Hollywood. It's around. And a young woman, she want a man. And she want one now. And the one she want. Oh, hallelujah. It's got to match the temper of the world. Might be a flashy car. Nothing behind it. They don't look for potential. No, sir. You know why? Because the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. He's a right. And so they don't want what's in the church. No, they want what's in the world. Because all their friends want that. And it's driving them to a place. Oh, hallelujah. But they are so blinded. Oh, hallelujah. Like Balaam, they don't see where they're going. Jesus. Samson chose a Delilah. Hallelujah. And you know the word was, is there no woman in Hebrew? Oh yes. But, but you know, I don't see what they got. It depends on where you're looking. Because men look at the outward appearance. You know, I want somebody with external asset. But internally empty. That's what the world gives. Are you there with me? But you know, prophet tell us, uh, when a young girl looking for a mate, uh, what she ought to be looking for is character. And a young boy looking for, I mean a girl, what he ought to be looking for is character. Is that right? Hallelujah. But you know, that character is of such, uh, it will not satisfy the I know. So they want somebody, hey amen, that tell them, you know, about your external asset. Is that right? I tell you, that's a mark of the devil. Is that right? Oh, when you know he's so sweet. He's so, he's so nice. You know, he tell me nice things. So the devil tell Eve. Is that right? Hallelujah. But the end of it, let me say this to you young people. If the young girl or the young boy is not a believer filled with the Holy Ghost, all their desire is of the enemy. Is that right? And I tell you, you don't have to try the world. Everything that you need in this world, it's coming. All you've got to do is to wait on God's promise. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. But you know, many of you, whatever you feed upon that, you become. You, you know, you come to church and the songs of Zion sing. And you know, you have no expression. You look sad and dreary. Like the only reason you're in church is because your parents make you to be there. But if you had your own will, you would not be there. Hallelujah. And I know many of you 
with your cell phones and your little ear plug in your ears. You're not listening to songs of Zion. You so feed on the things of the world that the things of the world are becoming you and you are becoming the world. There's an incarnation taking place. Amen. And it's building in you. Amen. A seed of discrepancy. And it's against the word of God. Hallelujah. And you wonder why can't I have victory in my life? Victory can't come by that. That cannot bring victory. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, my Lord. Because I'll tell you what, wherever you go and whatever you do, if you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got nothing. Is that right? Hallelujah. People said, well, look at you. Talking to your parents now. You were in the world one time. You did this one time. So I'm going to do it too. You know, we thank God for grace. Yes, Hello? Amen. You thank God for grace uh, that God capture you before it's too late. Yes, and you know, people said, oh, what a testimony. He was a smoker. He was a gambler. He was a thief. And, and God saved him out of that. That's no testimony. That's on the tin line of the grace of God. I tell you about another testimony of somebody who has never smoked, who has never gambled, who has never run out in the world. Amen. And God keep you from a child. Amen. Bring you up through all the strains of life. Amen. And God present you blameless. What are you trying to tell me? That God's grace is not able. I challenge you this morning. The grace of God is sufficient to keep you through everything in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you, many of you. Oh, you regret those days in the world. Oh, you regret those things you've done in the world. And the hands of those things, the hand of time cannot be turned back. They cannot be undone the things that was done. Amen, when you come to this point, uh, amen, many you can't live uh, with the condemnation uh, that the devil brings on you. Hallelujah, about your yesterday. Uh, but you can bypass that. Uh, you don't have to go down. Uh, amen. In the dungeons of sin. Uh, amen. For the grace of God uh, is sufficient uh, to take you before that. <laughs> and so therefore I say, thank God for the oil and the wine. Hallelujah. Now may I say this. Uh, as a oil signify the Holy Spirit. Yet yeah, you can have the baptism of the Holy Spirit on your flesh. There's people who are real stimulated in their flesh, emotional, about God. But that never dropped down in their soul. And I say this to you. You gotta watch what you got. For if what you have uh, is not changing your entire being uh, back to the word of God. Uh, amen. And the anointing uh, is on the wrong place. Is the right. Hallelujah. You can have the anointing the wrong place. Hallelujah. And every time you hear the music uh, of the word of God. Oh Jesus. Brothers I mean, have you ever seen on a street? Uh, Amen. I mean, they're hearing religious music uh, and there's a certain kind of music that people like. And when they hear that music, oh, they sing a gyrate and they dance to God music. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. I mean, and they got such an anointing, uh, but give them the true word of God. And they get real cool. They don't want that. They want something that stimulate the flesh. But brethren, I'll tell you what, uh, the word of God today uh, is not for reformation. Hallelujah. No, sir. 
this word of God, hallelujah, is to convert you, to make you a brand new person in Christ Jesus. It will stimulate your soul. Let the Holy Spirit fall down on the inside of the inside. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, the old time song they sing, I want a revival in my soul. I must apply to the blood of Jesus to get a revival in my soul. I want something that will keep me. I want something that will carry me through the dark periods of life. And brethren, I'll tell you what, the way the world is going today, and our children in school, you know, I tell you, when you send them to school, you don't know what they're going to be exposed to. You know, I hear Brother Annie speaking this morning. How about as a little child going to Sunday school? Many children never had that experience. We, we call this a Christian country. It used to be. It used to be that most children would have found a church on Saturday or Sunday morning to go to. But today there's children from the day they were born. They pass church. That's the nearest they ever get to God. And you know you go to school. And you're, you're, you're knackered with these ones. And you know you're so weak in character. When you're in company and you say let us go. You're ready to do it. And so you as Christians, you don't know what your children are being exposed to. That brethren, I tell you, because of our crisis today, in the home, it becomes so distance. That parents don't talk to children. In other words, you don't talk to them unless you're telling them to shut up. We've got an experience where everybody tell you what you ought not to do. But nobody tell you what you ought to do. And so we feel like outside there is just a picnic. But I want to tell you beyond the faces, beyond the things that you see. Brethren, I tell you there's a trap that is set out there for your life. Hallelujah. Amen. And Satan want to get you in such a place. He want to move you into a direction that you've lost your senses. Amen. That stimulation. Amen. That you have for God. He want to get you to a place to somebody who will tell you that I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the church. I don't believe in Christianity. And you sit down and you feed on these things. There's people out there who have sold their, sold their souls out to demons and devils. Hallelujah. And they're right there in our school. Teachers who are hidden. Is a rat. Hallelujah. You watch the way your children are acting today. And you look at the homes they are coming from. There's a spiritual battle that is going on. And they think that everything is all right. But check them out. And you wonder how could it be that they have no ambition to move forward and achieve in life. Ask the question. Why is it that they have no ambition to achieve anything? And they don't care because their spirits that bound their minds. Hallelujah. The battle is not natural. Are you there with me? There's a trap that is set. It's a rat. And brethren, I'll tell you when these spirits uh, come into the church. 
hallelujah, it's going to take the discerning of spirits to realize that a lot of young people has got demonic power that is binding them. You want to know? They run from the prayer meeting. They don't want to be laid hands on. No, sir, because there's a spirit that is motivating them. And if you speak to them, the reason they react is because they want a God, that spirit that is motivating them. But you want to get rid of spirit? Expose him. Expose him. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That you know today, education, I tell you, is like a two way street. But you know, I don't think education turns you away from the word of God. It's not education that turns you away from the word of God. No, it's those influences that are with you. Are you there with me? And people think it's all right. You know, sometimes there's ch things in school that the ch teacher say children must partake of. And you know, you as parents, it's against your faith. And you know, the first thing you do, you compromise. And you said, well, you know, it's all right. You're going to do this dance and you're going to dress in a tats or something like that for your little girls. And, you know, you, 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 you step down, you, you compromise. You say it's all right because it's just cool. But I tell you, if you realize some of the things that are happening in school today. Are you there with me? And there's a direct, hallelujah, influence that is there. To capture the minds of the children. But we as Christians we behave as though we are blinded. Brother Dixon was saying this morning. And you little girls. If you realize and sometimes you dress them in little pants. And sometimes in skirt. You find they are going to gravitate to a spirit. That they see out in the world. And if you tell them choose your dress. They want a little pair of pants to put on. Because there is a demon spirit. That is on them. Oh no, you say no, they, no, Pastor. Well, I tell you, that's why your man is taken over. Hello. It's a spirit that is there. Train up a child in the way they should grow. That when they're whole, they'll not depart from it. And so, parents, I didn't even mean to go this direction. But you know, parents, you, it's got to be like this. Don't give your children options. Don't give them options. You know what is right. Lead them in the path that is right. When they come of age, they'll have options. Are you there with me? So you decide the kind of skirt they're going to wear. You decide the kind of pants he's going to wear. You decide the kind of haircut. Because you know better. Because you pray true. Until you hit solid rock with God. It's a right. Hallelujah. Because when you give them that option. Amen. Then the choice becomes theirs. And they are feeding from another fountain. That is not the fountain of God. And so they're going to start to tell you, this is what I want to wear. And this is what I want to put on. This is how I want to look. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know the worst thing? When the devil get on your children, they get on you too. That you go to church and somebody says something about it. And you get real upset. You get angry with the person. You, you get angry with the deacons. Because they say something about it. Because you know leave my children alone. That's not your business. Stop watching my children. You better pray God somebody watch your children for you. Amen. 
Hallelujah. I don't want nobody to watch my children. Hallelujah. But you know, your eyes alone can't do it. Is that right? And you're playing right into the devil's hand. Is that right? And you know, if somebody tells you something about your child, the first thing you do is disbelieve. Because my little angel would never do that. Is that right? I, I tell you what, your little demon certainly will do it. Is that right? Because if your children don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, hello, they belong to the devil. Hallelujah. And the works of the devil they are going to do. Is that right? So you better pray the devil after of them. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we find that spirit. Now they come to church. And you know, you know, the, 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 the songs are going on. They catch and look. They don't worship. You know why? The devil have them exactly where he wants them. But I'll tell you what. When you don't see them and at school they hear music. You know what they do? They, they, they rock. Because that's what's in them. Whatsoever you yield your member servant to. Of its servant you are. Is that right? They don't want God's word. There's another spirit. And so. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand why parents don't have control over their children no more. I don't understand it. I don't understand why parents can't tell their children what to do and they do it anymore. I don't understand that. I don't understand the kind of spirit where when parents tell your children to do one thing, they tell you something else. And you stand down and they do what they want to do. I don't understand that kind of spirit. Something wrong somewhere, Brother Connie. Something's gone wrong. And so in the church, there is a battle. Because let me tell you this, young people, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're going to gravitate to other things of the world. Let me tell you, marijuana is going to blow your brain, but it's going to seem enticing to you. And you're going to rub it in your hand and you're going to smoke it. And you're going to tell me nothing's wrong with it. But I'll tell you what, you can't get a job today because they're testing you for drugs. Hello? Hello. And I'll tell you, the colleges are going to start to do the same thing. And you can't get an education because of the drugs. But there's a spirit that's motivating you. And the young girls, because of the influence, they're going to give their bodies before time. And they're going to keep that a secret from their parents. Hello. And so because of that, they can't concentrate. Because they're taking on more than they can manage. And they're thinking that, oh yes, I can drug this and I can drug my school. No, you can't do it. But why? Because there's a spirit that is motivating you. And you've lost your sense to move on in a positive direction. That's right, that's right. Oh, hallelujah. That's right. So, brethren, I tell you, what we ought to do, we ought to pray for our children. Pray for our families. We need to pray for those mothers and fathers who has let down the bars in the home. And the sheep got out and the goats get in. What we need is a whole fashioned Holy Ghost revival among the youth of today. Hallelujah. Because you've lost your joy for the word of God. But you've got joy for the world. Amen. 
You know, they can tell you the words of the songs that Vibes Cartel. And all of it, they can tell you the words. Word for word, they can tell you. They can tell you word for word what they say. But they can't tell you what the word of God say. Because you know you allow them in their room with a, that little earphone stick in their ears. And so you don't know what they're listening to. Hello? And I tell you what, no music carries anointing. Spirit on the music. And you know, you said, well, I don't listen that. I just listen to blues, love music. That also carry a spirit. That stimulate a young girl to want to be in love before she reached to the age to be in love. And you know, you, you come up in a time where the pressure is always there. And so you're gravitating towards these things. And you're thinking, that is what's best for you. Oh, it means me good. That's what Samson think about Delilah. She means me good. Until the plot works out and they put out his eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Jesus. But oh, thank God. He never threw the clear way. Right. I say to you this morning. It don't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you reach. You can get back on track. You can get back on track. You can get back to the place. Where God really wants you. You can get back on course. To do the things that you ought to be doing. Hallelujah. I thank God this morning. That he's a God of grace. Oh many times. It is said it seems like there's no grace in it. But the God who we serve. He's a God of grace. Right where you are this morning. God will meet your needs. How is it that when you decide to do something that is against the word of God, you need company to do it? You need, you need somebody, your friend, to look at and say, ah, this is what we're doing. I don't care what he's saying. This is what we're doing. But let me tell you this, there comes a day when no friend can help you. There is a day you've got to give an account for yourself. Every man will have to be convinced in his own heart. Hallelujah. There is a day of reckoning. Hallelujah. Your parents can't help you. Your friend can't help you. But you've come to an age to make a decision. What will your answer be? Is it right? You got to make a decision in this life. But the brethren say you got to make a decision whether you want to be educated or not. You're going to make a decision whether you want to be a Christian or not. You're going to make a decision. You want to follow the way of the world. Oh, you want to take God's word. You've got to make a decision for yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Because uh, the days are coming upon you. Hallelujah. You know, even school is like a shelter. I know where you're going in school, you have this five, six years to, to play games and to do all that you can. But there's a time when you're going to sit exams. And it's going to determine if all those years were wasted years. And you know, you can play all you can. But that day is coming. 
And the earlier you decide that there is a day of reckoning that is coming. I've got to prepare for that day. So is it with your life and God. Hallelujah. There's a day of reckoning that is coming. Are you preparing for that day? Are you preparing your life to succeed? Are you preparing your life? Are you giving yourself the best chance that there is? Last week I went to the pharmacy in Linston. And there was a, a mother. She came in and she had a little child was going to sit the GSAT exam. And she, she wanted to buy Ginkgo by Noble. That's something that they say. It's kind of brain food for people who study. But you know, it, it tickles me because this was the week of exam. This was about Tuesday. This was Tuesday. And exam is Thursday. And she's buying it. And so they, they tell her, they said, uh, who are you buying it for? And she said, you talk about her child. He said, no, he's too young. He can't take it. And she said, yes. And she began to tell the brand that somebody tell her. And I'm there, I'm smiling, I'm saying, I mean, hey, it's too late. Because if what he had read never yet recorded, it can't record again. Okay, you're going to retain something that you never have. But now she has a case of it and she run out of the pharmacy and she go ask a question again. She come back and said, yes. And she begin to tell them the color of the tablet. And they tell her, no, it's not for that child. But you know what? The time is now. She missed the time and now it is too late. Young men, my young sisters, you're going to school. Now is the time to do what you've got to do. You know, you're going to a class and you see some people not going anywhere. You know, I remember when I went to Dintil it's many years ago, 1979. You know, we come from all parishes around. St. Mary, St. Anne, Clarendon, St. Elizabeth, Kingston, Portland, and they come, you know, we have a boarding school, and there's a friend I have, and he's from St. Mary, and from he entered school, you could see he was cut out for where he's, what he's going to do. After the first semester, he got a girl pregnant in the cow shed next door to the block. And, you know, she dropped out for a while, but he stays. She came back later. But you know, and at the end, he, he never changed. About two years ago, he called me. And he has an emergency. And he wants $5,000 to borrow. I was happy. Because it's only 5000 Because I, I felt like I would never hear from him again. And I'll tell you what, I gave it to him. And I never hear from him again. So somebody tell me, the reason he want it. He has a baby mother and wife problem. That's where he started out. And 30 years after, he's still there. Brethren, I show you this. You take a child. And you watch that child with a certain characteristic. Angry. Anger. That child will grow with that same anger. The only thing that can stop that is the blood of Jesus Christ. And you watch somebody in their teenage years start to slacken up on everything that is positive. And you watch that life 20 years after. Hello. And the person is the same way. Are you there with me? And so, I remember 
in 1982, I began to come under conviction of the Holy Spirit at school. And so I joined the ISCF. And days I don't know what happened to me, I was crying. I just feel the move of God inside of me, really. I just feel like I need to serve God. And you know, brethren, I cried. I asked friends who were Christians to pray with me. I wasn't a Christian. At that time, I quit church. Because in our church, there was a division and a split in the church, really. And I, I just go with the people who left and I never go to church anymore. But you know, that conviction of the Holy Spirit lead me to where I am today. Look at your life this morning. This morning. And exactly where you are. If you're rebelling against authority, your parents. If God don't intervene 20 years from now, you'll be rebelling against the police. Might be in and out of jail. You understand what I'm saying? And if in your life you're loose as a young girl and you can't resist the young men if God don't intervene 20 years from now you might just be a prostitute somewhere brethren people don't change unless God change them Hello? They will not change unless God change them. And so in your life, someday you got to realize that Lord, this is it. That's not where I want to go. Hallelujah. I'm going to make a change. Hallelujah. You know, I had a brother. That if my brother, if the police stop him anywhere on the road, they might as well come out and start fight. Because he just never liked the police. And you know what? As soon as he became a man, he was in jail. Spent years in prison. I remember one time he was going abroad and he was at the airport. And the police said something to him. And they had to lock him up. He just hated authority. And you know, he just grew that way. And so what's in you now? It's going to blossom. It's going to mature. It's going to bear fruit. You're going to be the fruit of exactly the way you are today. Tomo today you're a loser. Tomorrow you're a loser. You've got to make a change. Hello. Hello. Look at your life this morning. Look where you are this morning. Is that where you want to be? Is that the direction that you want to take? But in the name of Jesus Christ, you can make a difference. Because there's something that nobody, nobody can do for you. I remember when I was in grade two in Linsley College. There's a boy that I know, Eric Rowe. And I knew when he did it. He steal from somebody's purse. And you know, he gave me some of the money. Yeah, he gave me some. And, and I knew I, I didn't say anything really. But you know what? I remember him seeing him in Linstead when he was a young man or so. He spent the rest of his life in prison. Because what he was then, he never changed. He never changed. That's how life is. Young people, 
what do you want out of this life? You said, you know, I want to grow up. I want to be a doctor. I want to be this. But if you don't have that frame today, you will never reach there. Don't let no dopey fool you. You'll never reach there. You got to start somewhere. And the time to start is now. The only way to be secure is to put your life in the hands of Almighty God. I close with the story that I put on. I had a son. And he was a good lad. He grew up and he got converted and he wanted to be a preacher. And so the church had sent him on to a seminary far away from home. And he was there for a few years and while he was there, he sent a telegram. His mother was dying. Pack your things, get ready because you might have to stand at your mother's deadbed. And that night he packed his things and the following morning when he was expecting to go, they tell him, everything is all right. You can stay. And so, you know, it went on and he'd finish all his study and he went back home and went to his mother and he said mother I want to ask you a question what happened to that time you were going to die how did you ever make it through all of that and she began to tell him son you know a woman from down the church down the street had visited me and she realized that I was dying and she she asked me if I wanted her pastor to come and pray for me. And I agree. And he came and he took St. Mark 11. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatsoever thing you desire. He said, Mother, but we're taught. Do you follow those people? We are taught in Bible school. That part of the word is not inspired. And the mother said, son, if God could save my life out of the part of the book that is not inspired. What about the part that is inspired? What will it do for my life? Hallelujah. But I'll tell you about a part that is inspired this morning. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have eternal life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved this morning you like the direction your life take hallelujah tell me are you satisfied with yourself? Are you satisfied with your life this morning? And the way you're going? Do you want Jesus to help you to make that change in your life this morning? You know, I thank God that Jesus Christ helped me when I was a young man. To make a change in my life. Because I know for a fact I would not be here this morning. So I thank God. Is there somebody this morning that says, I want God to help me to get on track? Young people, you can come to the altar if you want to. I want to get back on the mark for Jesus Christ. I want to be certain this morning that I'm making the right decisions for my life. I'm going to make up my mind to fight against the influences of the world. I want something for my life. I want Jesus Christ 
and him crucified. If somebody could help me sing the song. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I want you to look within yourselves this morning. Because the whole world is before you this morning. Satan has many traps set out to catch you this morning. But Jesus Christ can make a change in your life. Can we have that song? Hallelujah. With your heads bow everywhere. Let us sing this song prayerfully. Let us look within as we sing this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to bow your heads and your eyes closed. And wherever you are right now, you can surrender to God. And young people, I say to you, right where you are now and how you are now, that's how your tomorrow going to be. But you can make a change. You can cause that change in your life. That today you say, Lord, I give myself to you. You've got to surrender. The Bible said, except you be converted and be like a little child, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. If you're rebellious today, you're going to be rebellious tomorrow. If you're angry today, you're going to be angry tomorrow. But today, if you will surrender, tomorrow, you give your heart to God, He'll give you the everlasting kingdom. What is your desire this day? Lord Jesus, and the heads bow and the eyes close, God. Lord Jesus, we didn't even plan to have a service like this today, but Lord God, this is where you want us to go. Lord God, these young people at the altar, some at their seat, oh God, some, Lord God, still being stubborn. But Lord God, thou knowest the heart of every person. Heavenly Father, give us that spirit, O oh God, today. The Lord God, someone surrendering their heart to you, O oh God. Lord, making that promise in their heart. Lord, making that plea, that petition. Lord Jesus, save me now. Lord, save me from this wicked world. Lord, save me from myself. Lord, save me from my desire. Lord, save me from the things of this world. Lord, save me from the trap of the enemy. Lord Jesus, set me free, oh God. Lord God, from the fiery darts of the enemy. Lord Jesus, uh, cause that, oh God, there be a change in my life. Uh, that, Lord God, it will not be according, oh God, to my will. But Lord, your desire for my life. Lord God, you said with the mouth confession is made and in the heart men believe unto righteousness. And the God who raised Jesus from the dead is able to save this morning, God. Lord Jesus, we pray that, oh God, hearts, oh God, will become soft before you this morning. Lord God, as somebody look within their heart and they might see, oh God, the error of their ways today. Lord God, there might be that desire, oh God, to make a change. David it was that says, I will turn my house towards the hills from whence cometh my help, and my help cometh from the Lord who has made heaven and earth. Lord God, save the children this morning. Lord God, give them a renewed desire, oh God, to yearn after the things that are yours, and Lord God, shut out the things of the world, oh God. 
Heavenly Father, loose them, O oh God, from the powers of hell, from the spirits, O oh God, oh, of perdition this morning. And Lord God, may their hearts be turned to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, may they leave here, O oh God, being obedient to their parents, being obedient in school. Lord God, may they leave here, O oh God, this morning with a brand new fashion. Lord God, that the God that they wait upon this morning may quickly come to their heart and may make that change, O oh God. Lord God, give them the oil oh, of the Holy Spirit and stimulate them, O oh God, with the revelation of your word that, Lord God, they might yearn after the things that are of God. Bless us this morning, God, as we look to you. Lord God, as we look to your word. Lord God, as we seek after you, O oh God, for our deliverance this morning. Deliver them, Lord God, from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. Lord God, from the spirit that walketh by noonday. Lord Jesus, may you shelter them under your wing, O oh God, and cover them, O oh God, by your blood. Lord God, we plea and we pray and we cry these things this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. And may you say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I want you to remember this morning, whoever you are today, that person you will be tomorrow. But if you put your lives in the hands of Jesus Christ, he will order your life. Put your hands in the hands of Almighty God and let God order your life. Because if God doesn't order your life, then your life is in the hands of the enemy. And Satan has nothing good in store for you. But Jesus Christ will keep you by his grace. And just remember this one thing. You're never too young to serve the Lord. Because you're never too young to die. And so before you die, seek the Lord this morning. May God bless you. And may the word take full effect in your life. God bless you this morning. May we see a new model in your life. God bless you.